Guardians unable to sweep the series against the Royals. They're finally done with Kansas City. And even though they didn't win the finale, the rest of the scoreboard went the Guardians' way on Wednesday night. And this time of year, that's as good as a win. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use code all lowercase locked on MLB to win $50 instantly when you play five. You don't even need to win to get that 50 bonus. Prize Picks, run your game. On today's Lockdown Guardians, we will break down the Guardians' loss to Kansas City, but we will also talk about divisional and playoff math, and we're going to continue to do that math on the show until the Guardians clinch a playoff spot, clinch the division. We'll continue to break down the scoreboard every day because that's what's fun this time of year. We're also going to get into some roster tweaks to talk about guys that would be a good finish complement to the roster the rest of the season or come playoff time. Some of that will depend on who they're playing potentially. And I think for today we're finally going to get into some 40-man ads in the offseason, which might also bake into the roster decisions at the end of the regular season. And also, like, uh, good on Eric Saprowski. Z- Z- probably saying his name wrong because I guess every name wrong major league debut that's always a cool thing you finally got Indeed. out uh for those who do not know me I'm Jeff Ellis one of your two co-hosts here of Lockdown Guardians before this I was a national prospect and draft analyst at Scout and 24 7 um yesterday's number was 18 in honor of uh it was the anniversary of uh Kenny Lofton reaching uh in 18 consecutive games in 2000 uh today I am your uh hundredth favorite uh cleveland sports blogger that has or will ever exist a hundred are there even a hundred cleveland sports bloggers that ever existed? well it's, you know there's like you know the people that'll come after me um as long as you don't believe brock and meyer which pretty much said the game would be on its like last legs in about five more years <laughs> what a great show that was i missed I, that show Hank i enjoyed it great job it was, on that show. It, was, it was very fun yes it was a very fun show i'm justin ladd i've been covering the guardians my lake system since 2007 uh, I've written at places like where I was the editor in chief at Guardians Baseball Insider for a couple of years. Um, I've also freelanced the News Herald and the Morning Journal, where I will be doing some upcoming features on Travis Bazana. So the interview there, so look out for that. I'll be writing the playoff series preview there uh, for the Captains and the Dayton Dragons. Speaking of which, get your tickets. We're going to say it again, September twelfth. Uh, there'll be a Lockdown Guardians meetup. If you buy tickets from the link on the YouTube page or the podcast description has the link. The promo code is locked on for 20% off. Come hang out, sit in our section. We'll chat. We'll watch some captains play off baseball. We'll talk guardians. And I guess I'll say this now. I have a Tanner Bybee signed baseball to be giving away that night. I haven't decided how we're going to do it, oh. but I do have a ball signed by a friend of the show, Tanner Bybee, who agreed to sign a ball for us for that night. Also took the time to record something for us recently. Hopefully you'll hear that on our show soon. Nice. Um, but yeah, come come hang out, win a uh, Tanner Bobby ball, watch some captains playoff baseball. Guardians playoff baseball, too. We're going to add the scoreboard to the bottom line if you're watching on YouTube. Um, as we're recording this, I believe the Yankees are losing 10-2 to to the Rangers, which is good for Cleveland because that means everybody Man. besides the Royals um, that are impacting the Guardians are now. The Astros lost, the Orioles lost, the White Sox of all teams, Jeff. The Twins lost. The Tigers are winning again, which that doesn't really affect the Guardians, but Tigers are, are doing good. <laughs> Tigers got a small chance. Like we were talking off air yesterday. It's like they're not completely out of this. There, there's a small chance they could. The Red they Sox the are not good. So, they, I, well, did Boston lose today? Boston lost. So the Tigers yeah, so win. They'll be the, a whole game. They'll ahead be ahead of, of Boston. Yeah. For as much yeah. as everyone complains about the Central, like every team except for the White Sox, the White Sox have four. It was it the AL Central have four teams? Over 500, but as in a the division, race, they're, yeah. they're 50 games under 500, thanks to the White Sox. Because of the White Sox. But they won on Wednesday, so that's good for Cleveland because that keeps them um, just barely below the Orioles in terms of winning percentage. The Yankees are going to lose, so they stick in the race there. Um, they blew a big one yesterday, too. Astros. Yeah, walk-off grand you slam know, by Wyatt Langford. Must, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like when you have an unreliable closer. What's that like? Can anyone explain that yeah, one to me? What's, what's it like? Get, I, yeah, hard to say. I mean, I guess we just saw last year things got weird with Emmanuel Classe, but it is what yeah. it is. 
Uh, Aaron Boone said that they were going to create it with the closer role. It's always what you want to hear your manager say in September. We're going to be creative with the closer role, AKA we are trying anything we can to get this bullpen figured out. So look, things aren't good in a lot of places. It's good for Cleveland. You know, Ben Lively in this you know, game, we'll throw up the records. By the way, the magic number is 19. We were going to do some, some fun magic number stuff, yeah. but it's, it's, it's Bob Feller. And, and what you can know, you say about Bob Feller? Really? Yeah. One of one of these points, if we have time and we're struggling and it's an off day, it's not going to be this week, but maybe in the future, we should just go through baseball and talk about how many teams Hunter Geddes and or Cade Smith would be close, the best run would would be their closer because I feel like they would uh, my is maybe, closer I, the same as best reliever though because ideally if your team's best reliever you're not waiting until the know, end a lot of teams still treat best reliever and closer like the same thing but like. I feel like, you know, I, I would bet almost a third of baseball would be using them is, is my off the top. Um, As their best yes. reliever somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, magic number is down to 19. That's any combination of Guardians wins. And right now it's Twins or Kansas City losses because those two have the same um, deficit for Cleveland in the division. However, again, if the Royals and Guardians finish tied at the end of the year, the Royals win the division, the Guardians would play, be a wild card team. If the Guardians and Twins are tied for the division lead at the end of the year, the Guardians win the division because of the tiebreaker as well, as we're showing the scoreboard on YouTube and, and the records right now. And just continue to do the math here. We, you know, yesterday Jeff was saying 10 wins, 90 wins could win the division. So the Guardians right now are 80 and 60, 10 wins over their final. Uh, I don't think that's the right number up there at this point. They have 20 games left, so. If they go 10 and 10 at this point, they would be 90 and 70. I have that number wrong. Shocking, Jeff. I got the math wrong. You got math wrong. Going? Never happens. I know that, that's never happened to me before. Um, I I passed all my math, math tests. I'm actually a, uh, a uh, trigonometrist or scientist. I don't know. One of those math jobs. I don't know, Jeff. Don't, don't question me on the math. If they go 10 and 10, they'll be 90 and 70 at the end of the year. The Royal, the Minnesota Twins to go 90 and 71 would have to be 15 and 7. The Royals would have to go 14 and 5. Um, so again, Guardians just got to play 500 ball the rest of the way. Things will be good. Yep. The other, other question coming will be, you know, the Astros who who lost the Reds on on Wednesday and that three game series might make the difference. Um, about this game on Wednesday, Jeff. So they won the series. I know they lost the finale. I mean, it comes down to Ben Lively. You know, threw a bad, got into a bad count against Tommy, Tommy Fan, threw a bad pitch. And I mean, it was a it was a bad pitch. But it was also a bad count. And and the the Royals hit Ben Lively pretty hard on Wednesday. And he was struggling to put away hitters, and and was was not really getting ahead. He was kind of living on the edge at times. Only walked a batter, but you know, eight base runners all night is is not great through four innings, plus the home run. So you know, it was not. But again, you also can't win it. You can't win a game with one run either. So as for yeah. as shaky as Lively was, it was not horrible. But he kind of had himself to blame in this one, whereas the Pirates start, you know, the Brian Rocchio goof, let that one go off the rails. This one, yeah. you know, Ben Lively wasn't great. The offense was even worse. It just didn't add up. I just think it's one of those things, too. Like, if we take three steps back and just look at big picture, before this series started, if we had said, hey, they're going to take two out of three, we would have all said, we'll take it. And we would have all guessed this is the game they lost. Like, this was a hard matchup on paper. This was a situation where, the, the, you know, I, I didn't I, I didn't feel good about this one, even even after the success the last two days. And that's part of baseball. You don't win them all. You're, you know, two out of three is always a success, successful outcome. Mm -hmm. And they have built up that lead. And yeah, I mean, they just it, it it's was like a, last week never happened. Yeah. And it's one of those things, too, where <laughs> it's like it was a game that, like, I think if you're frustrated, it's because it's it's the the game that kind of reflects when what happens when things go wrong, which is they actually got a decent amount of guys on base. They, you know, they just weren't putting things together, which what is, is eight you know, runners by, by your score. Like uh, my game. Runs? So eight would be you, you're, you're averaging about like four, it'd be two. So, two, still a little more. so, I mean, it's, it's low. I mean, at the other side, um, the Royals know, the, had 11 base. The runners, Royals so. were high on it and Cleveland was low. So, but you check two out of three. That's a success. Like I, I was thinking, I was thinking one out of three when we came to this, you can go back and listen to the show from Monday. I'm like, uh, maybe they get the one. Like I, mm -hmm. I didn't think, you know, Kansas city. Yes. They've been struggling, but it's still a good team. Um, just not as good as the tigers who might be the best team in the AL central right now. Um, I, kid, for sure. I mean, uh, no, I mean, they're, 
they're a great team right now. But you won Gavin, Gavin Williams start. He shut him down. Yep. Then Tanner, Tanner was fan. shut him down. Tanner ran into just, tr- you know. yeah. You know, Tanner ran into trouble, but he worked his way out of it. You know, Ben mm. Lively has been walking a tightrope all year. Advanced metrics do not love him. Um, you know, but he has been useful. He's been solid, and they've got him for multiple more seasons, which is fantastic. But uh, yeah, I, I don't. You know, it's not for he's now. A great back end starter. That's yeah, who he he's, is. He, he's your fifth well, he's starter this year, and yeah, you're you fine that, with that for sure. Yeah, you take what you can do, especially considering where the Guardians were in the rotation this year. Right when you were rolling out Carl, Carlos Carrasco early on, who had you know good moments, but a lot of rough ones. Logan Allen, Tristan McKenzie just really never played bad. together. I think they were both bad. All bad. Uh, yeah, and then geez, it's just it's just been kind of a nightmare. You didn't have Gavin Williams most of the season until this point, so like. You know what Lively has done for you has been has been huge. We will the say though, we'll the comments, yeah, the king of options. What we will say though is a lot of comments from people saying, "Oh, you got to start by uh, Lively in a playoff game because he has gotten you here." And here's why: that's the wrong way to look at that. And we will talk about that next on today's Lockdown Guardians. Let's talk about our good friends over at Prize Pick. So right now. Prize Picks is giving you one for free. All through the month of September, they are giving you one for free. And with Prize Picks, if you're not familiar with it, it's all you do is you pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. They're giving you Caleb Williams one yard every Sunday. So that is one of the two you need minimum. So you just got to pick one more stat category. And they're all over the place. I thought this was a crazy one. Quinn Ewers, uh, you could tell I don't watch a lot of college football. Travis Hunter and Donovan Edwards. So you get a quarterback from Texas, a wide receiver from Colorado, and a running back from Michigan that if they have 403.5 combined yards. I don't know if that's a good bet or not. I just thought it was kind of fun the way they set that up with three different positions from three different colleges. That's under their specials tab. You know, you can go to KBO. You can go do lacrosse. You can do Dota. You can do League of Legends. Whatever it is you love, you will find it over at Prize Picks. So download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On MLB and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly. That's free money when you play five. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollars bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Oh my! The White Sox beat the Orioles. The Ranger or the Tiger? Tigers? Well, the Tigers are hot. The Yankees are struggling. The AL East is a battle. The uh, Brewers are great. The AL Central is getting close to being wrapped up. All that stuff you can find over on Lockdown MLB with our pal Sully. He'll cover all the best storylines today. So if you want to keep up with all the storylines in one place for Major League Baseball, as the pennant races are all winding down and heating up, go to Lockdown MLB with our pal Sully, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Jeff, we get a lot of comments saying you got to start Ben Lively in a playoff game. You got to start Ben Lively in a playoff game. And I I think a lot of the tone of those comments is making it seem like it's a reward for what he's done for them this season. And that's fine. Like you can say, like, he's carried the road. He would carry the rotation in the first half. There's no doubt he carried this rotation. Um, Mm -hmm. It was him and Tanner Bybee, the only guys you could really rely on day to day. Everybody else was, was a toss in the air. And then thank goodness the Guardians dart throws for Boyd and Cobb have seemed to work out so far. I don't think you can't treat a playoff start like a reward. Yeah. You I mean, have to put your best foot forward. Yeah. And, and I think lively. all players, yeah. Player team teams want to win and, and every every athlete competes and they all want to be part of the reason they're winning. But people also are realistic and they're if you're a team guy, you're going to do whatever it takes for the team to win. So if it if it benefits Cleveland for Tanner for Tanner Bybee for for Ben Lively to go to the bullpen and be a bridge guy or yeah. maybe he doesn't start in the first round whatever it is I'm sure he'll do it I'm sure everybody wants to be the guy out there yeah. to do it but a team approach is what's got to come first in the playoffs especially because and... isn't Cobb the only player on the roster who started a playoff game correct you are correct Cobb is the only one I don't think right now with how the rotation has been the last couple of turns, Ben Lively is a guy you start in a five game series because remember you have off days. So someone's going to start twice. Who's the mm-hmm. guy you want to start twice, Jeff. And cause we, or I guess we're saying like, Logan Allen. 20, 
I, we, I traded him to the Yankees in my sleep there, and I remember he's gone, just like Shane Bieber was on the Cubs in January or the Reds. No, it was I the Reds. Remember. It was the Reds. He was, was, he was the, the deal was done. He was to the Reds. Yeah. Cloud Chasers by the end of that, that. By the end of that January week, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think Tanner Bybee is the guy you want to start twice in the series. One hundred percent. I don't think there's any debate about that. Yeah, I definitely don't want Gavin starting twice with his inconsistencies. If you have to go five. And then you just line up Boyd and Cobb behind those guys. I could even imagine a scenario where maybe you start. This might be getting cute, but I can imagine a scenario where you go Bybee, Cobb, Boyd, and Williams becomes. He's never come out of the pen before, but mm-hmm. he becomes kind of your. Yeah. I remember, remember, Cleveland, remember Cleveland did this with like Bauer and Clevenger, and it mm-hmm. it felt a little too cute. No, maybe think, you can do that with those guys, especially because like, Williams has been a two pitch guy this year. He might excel in that role. And I think a lot of it with Boyd, honestly, you know, Boyd versus Cobb comes down to matchups like that's it. does. I, I think like if there's worse, a team, yeah. if there's a team that's really bad against lefties and Boyd should probably be your two. Like, honestly, like if it's a team that cannot hit lefties, then Tanner's your one Boyd's your two. And Cobb, I think Cobb should be your three with Gavin. I, I, I mean, Gavin would be deadly. You're talking about you're you're limiting that times for the order you're you know times it, to the order but it's just like you might get him for one to two innings all of a sudden tanner's only got to go five then you're going to gavin williams to kate smith to hunter gaddis to class a to ball game like and and i, and I love cobb as a bridge guy maybe you do but and i love cobb and i love boyd but they aren't going to be that same impact in the pen so that's that thing where like if they are close gavin williams is, has a much better chance to be an impactful reliever than the other players we're talking about too yeah, that's a really interesting idea, and I, I we didn't even discuss this as an idea before the show. Yeah. We just kind of it just kind of came out right there, but now that we're talking about it, I'm like, okay, or or do you get even again? These ideas are all a little too cute. Maybe you don't want to overthink it in this situation, which it can be. But I think the 2016 Kluber version, where he started Game Two against the Red Sox in the LDS, some of that had to do with, I think he had like a pulled quad or a hammy the final like start of the season. So he, he needed an extra day to heal or something. So Bauer started game one. And I think they did the same thing in 2017, but I think also Kluber's back was bothering him. Yeah. Where Bauer back, started one, game yeah. one, yeah. but they won both those games. They won game one against the, uh, the Red Sox and the Yankees, both those years. Do you start Alex Cobb game one? Because he's got the playoff experience. You bring Bybee game two because remember game two and five will be will be five days rest because of how the off days are lined up. So technically, your game two starter will be on normal rest on day on in game five. But you run the risk of of Bybee not starting. Well, I guess if the series so is over before, then hopefully you're winning. You're talking about the GN, the Tin G's horse racing the game, strategy, the game game theory, right? Yeah, game theory. This is that. Um, you know that it's it's an old thing that's and I brought this up last year on Sully's podcast, which is game theory that like if you have three horses that are good, better, and best, you know if the other guy's going to throw best at the start, you should throw, you know, good so you have a chance, but you know save your better or your best and your better and line yourself up to be advantageous. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's known as I just the think this cop has the playoff experience. Yeah, I mean, there's that. Like you have a legit reason for it. But then it does also line up with the game theory approach to these games. But again, the schedule too. If if you go to game five, because of how the off days are set up in the in the in the division series, um, obviously if the if the Guardians don't win the division, the wild card is is a very different setup. You got to go best, best, best. But game two and game five, game five would be Tanner on normal rest. Yeah. No, I, like I said, I, I, I get, absolutely get where you're coming from. Um, I, I I just, and honestly, like for a lot of years when this is, I mean, I am, I'm a nobody. But like when I was doing like competitive OOTP leagues, I always used that approach. I never, my star was always in game two. Um, because you, if you have really good pitching, you know, thing, it, it you just get such an advantage. So, I mean, I'm all for it. Like I would be fine going Cobb. Uh, by me but most people will say i'm insane but i i think it, it is it is a little bit it, 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 it is, is very cute but it is like i said before i okay so i did take a game theory class in college um that i did okay in um towards the end of my capstone so i did know game theory but i was not familiar with this theory back when i started doing it all on my own <laughs> um 
but I, I, there's some logic to it. I don't know if they'd consider it, but there is some logic to it. There is. And then again, you figure out Boyd in game three and then game four, you kind of figure out if you have to. Um, but yeah, that, that and Gavin as a reliever, I think to use him, be able to use him I, twice. Yeah, I just think, I think Gavin as a reliever is more my thing just because I feel like with his pitch mix, he is impactful there. Like he is so close to Cobb and Boyd in terms of performance because he's so up and down. It's like, I think he is the obvious choice now. Like just us talking about it. Like he'll be just so bringing much, him in. His impact you, you, you is greater want, than what Cobb would do out of the pen. You really ideally all, all three of these guys, even Tanner mm -hmm. to a point, especially against the playoff caliber team right now. I think you don't want any of these guys going a third time to the no. order. So if you have Gavin coming in behind one of them on one day mm -hmm. and the idea, because the idea is what, if you start Gavin in a game, he pitches once in the whole series. If you bring yeah. Gavin out of the bullpen, which I know he's never done, he can go in game one and four because it would be a bullpen day for him. That's a whole different scenario, though, that he's got to go through. But, um, you know, potentially being able to use Gavin twice in the series in short burst, limiting times to the order because he has been a two-pitch pitcher this year, but he also hasn't had the best health either. Um, you know, it's kind of what they wanted to do with Danny Salazar, and that never worked either. So, again, these are really, again, cute overthinking ideas, but um, – I, I, the, the main point of this whole conversation is I don't think right now as, as things are currently going, you can give Ben Lively a playoff start because he got, no. he's the, he's the guy that got you here. It's the best. It's the guys that are going to be the best chance to win that series. And as of right now, the things we're talking about all make a lot more sense than giving Ben Lively a start based off of, well, he had a great season or he carries you when you were needing the most he did, but what the team needs most is to put their best foot forward. And right now I know it's basing off of two starts and it was, you know, a rough night in Kansas city. Not even that debt, not bad. I he, think just the whole he, picture is Ben Lively is not your best one of your best yeah. five. He, he hasn't been as strong in the second four. half. And, and advanced metrics have shown all year he's been kind of playing with fire. And that's not, and that's again, he is a solid fifth starter. We are not denigrating him. I don't want it to come across as that. But I think he's Correct. clearly your fifth starter on this team right now. Yeah. I mean, that, there was a reason that no, you know, Zach, please, Zach, they didn't want him to start in a series in 2022. And then there was the whole debate about Bieber coming back on short rest and going to go with Savali. That was a whole mess. So, you know, you know, it is, it is what it is. So yeah, I, just cause he's, he's been great the first half or he's been a rotation saver when you need him the most, you can't necessarily um, designate a spot for him to reward him. You have to put your best foot forward. And I think right now he is not one of their best four Speaking of guys that aren't their best, we're going to get a little more into Stephen Kwan. we got some more data to kind of look at on, on the Stephen Kwan issue, who I hate to keep picking on the guy, but he is important for the Guardians. And he was 0 for 4, two strikeouts and two weekly hit balls on Wednesday night. We're going to look ahead to the Dodgers series. We're going to talk about roster tweaks for the rest of the season and playoffs. And we'll get into 40-man additions going into the offseason as well. All coming up. I can't believe I'm saying this, but fall is definitely here. Um, so maybe you save some money stocking up on sunscreen and uh, beach towels and, and snacks for the, the pool and the beach. Cost of Halloween candy, let me tell you, is crazy every time of year. Um, buying costumes for, for Halloween coming up. Buying just clothes for fall in general. All the things you want to do for fall, whatever it is. Um, some of that stuff really is, is getting expensive. The best way to go ahead and do and save some money on doing all that is with Ibotta. It is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. You can earn hundreds of on, on hundreds of items like groceries, beauty supplies, toys, candy, for Halloween, again, all that stuff. So make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing, whatever time of year. Other apps do not amount that much. With Ibotta, you can earn cash back and, and you can withdraw it to your bank through PayPal, gift cards. Just add offers to the app, upload your receipt, and the money is yours. So join the other 50 million users who use Ibotta to earn cash back every time they shop. Right now, Ibotta is, list, is, list, is offering our listeners $5 for just trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKDOWNLV when you register. So go to the App Store, Google Play Store, download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use our code LOCKDOWNMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKDOWNMLB. Guardians are off on Thursday, but they're back on Friday. It's a late one, 10-10 start Eastern. 
uh, what did we say? That's uh, five o'clock Hawaii time. Is it seven hours, five hours? It's, whatever. It's uh, five hours from Eastern. Five hours, five o'clock Hawaiian time. Wherever you are, tune in to the game on Friday against the Dodgers on your Sirius XM app. Just search Guardians. That will be, as of right now, Matt Boyd and TBD. Who do we say it was going to be for the, the Dodgers? I think we maybe Landon Knack. Was it Landon Knack or was it... Uh, oh, Gavin Stone. Miller? Gavin Stone. It is Gavin Stone who has been the Dodgers' best starter this year, which is wild to say. Well, the best healthy starter currently because they've got a lot of injured guys. Yeah, it's... it's uh, no, you're right. It's Landon Knack and Matthew Boyd. Alex Cobb on Saturday against Gavin Stone. And then Sunday is... Gavin Williams versus Jack Flaherty. All that action on your serious sex and app all weekend long. So I was looking at more about Stephen Kwan and stuff. You know, we just keep trying to figure out why, why is Stephen Kwan not the guy, even though he was last year, let alone the first half, right, where he was an all-star. Why is he just not the guy? He's a starter. Ago? He is viewed as one he of the three starter. best outfielders in the American League. He was. Well, I mean, that's voting. So I know, was, but he was hitting close to 400 different. at the time. He was. So we were now he's going to be what? below 290 before we uh, record again. Uh, is he below 290 right now? He's he will be. Yeah, as well, I said, by the time we record again. Weekend, hopefully he's coming back over the weekend to do much better. I would love to eat my words. Please make me eat them, Stephen. Please. Yeah. So some of the things, if you're watching on YouTube, we'll try to exp explain this for audio. But if you're watching on YouTube, take a look at the pitch charts. And this kind of confirms what we were kind of talking about. We weren't sure. We had to go back and find the data on this. But essentially, you can see in 2023, um, Stephen Kwan was getting fastballs really over the middle, very concentrated over the middle of the plate. Teams were not really afraid to attack him last year over the middle of the plate because he wasn't hitting the ball hard. It was it was fastballs, and it was like, okay, he might hit a double. He's might you know he might take it. He might might just hit a single. We're okay with that. The guy's just going to put the ball in play. We're okay with that. And he wasn't, and that's why he made the change over the off season to swing and miss a little more, try to hunt fastballs, try to hit, you know, drive it for power a little more because that's what teams are doing last year. They wanted him to impact the ball more. And he did that in the first half teams continued to throw the ball over the plate. And they said, we'll see what happens. Well, guess what? Pitchers adjusted. If you look on the screen here, the heat map of fastballs is now concentrated on the outside half of the plate way low and away, low and away in the, in the right-handed batter's box. And Stephen Kwan is a guy with short levers, not a lot of bat speed. That is a hard ball to hit. It's a hard ball to impact. So what he's doing it, he's popping it up. He's grounding it out. He's rolling over. He might even swing and miss. It's not an advantageous location for Stephen Kwan to do damage with. Even worse, so is this. Um, you'll notice here a lot of, um, on, this is 2023. This is breaking stuff, low and away, change-ups down there. And now teams are even concentrating that more. He is getting even more breaking stuff low and away. And so he's just not seeing fastballs over the good part of the plate anymore. Also because he's chasing more. The two strikeouts he had on Wednesday night. The chase night, has gotten just, bad for him. Yes, the chase has gotten bad. And you have to, we talked about this with the rest of the lineup throughout the year. You have to earn fastballs. You have to get yourself in accounts where pitchers might have to throw you a fastball, where you can sit fastball. Stephen Kwan is proving he will chase anything at this point because he is just struggling to find answers. Um, I, 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 it's not simple because we're just two idiots here with a microphone talking about this, but the data is pretty clear. He's just not earning fastballs. He's not getting fastballs. And I know some people have said it's Kenny Lofton disease. He's trying to hit home runs. I guess there's an element of that, but I think also it's just pitchers have, have moved where their fastball usage is. And he has to start adjusting to where they're throwing the fastballs and he has to stop chasing. I think it's just, it's, it's his approach has gotten out of whack. I don't think it has to do with trying to hit home runs. I think it has to do with where he's expecting guys to attack him. That's changed. They've pitchers have adjusted to where they're attacking him. He has not adjusted back to where the sure pitchers are coming in. How much he can, like, like you said, this is, yeah, fair. this is one of those situations where we, Yes, Jose can hit everything, but Jose is a Hall of Famer. Like, we can't compare him. Stephen Kwan. Don't compare anybody to Jose. Yeah. Stephen Kwan being smaller, it is hard. And he doesn't have Jose's bat speed to get there and get to those pitches. Or Jose, you know, preternatural ability to identify and react. Kwan is, is good at it, but no one is is Jose Ramirez. And it's they're just going to keep putting it out there because he's not doing anything with it. And it's causing him to get away from his game. 
it's causing him to chase more. I mean, some of the pitches today, he swung at one that was like way over the top of the zone. Like he is expanding mm-hmm. because of his frustration. Uh, so why would you throw him anything else right now? He's not being a disciplined hitter, which is kind of his superpower, like being a disciplined hitter, working those counts and, you know, not swinging at the things you can't, he's just got to basically sit there and be like, okay, if you hit that spot going away, good on you, but I'm not going for it. He's essentially has to stop because he's expanding the zone often to swing at those. So I think the only Mm -hmm. approach is to basically be like, okay, that's a a lot of guys when they miss that. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. like when, when guys miss in that area, they often, the ball goes outside or it breaks inside and then you can just, you know, hammer it. So I think he has to essentially like, okay, yeah, I'm going to swing less at that pitch. Yeah, I think you almost want to cut the zone in half because yes. it, you know, like Juan Soto talks about this a lot. Travis Bazana talked about it a lot because of Juan Soto. And there's other guys who do this theory too, where it's swing less and only swing the pitches you can do damage at. Yep. That's good for a power hitter. That's good if you have a power like Juan Soto or even Travis Bazana's power, which is like 50 55. Stephen Kwan's got at best 40 grade power. That's t- that's the best it's going to be for him. It's a, a 15 home run guy, absolute max. We've seen it this year. So part of the swing less theory, I think, works for guys who have power. Quan does not. But at least to shake out of the slump, you'd like to see him cut the zone in half and say, okay, those fastballs that I'm not getting on the inner half of the plate, um, that you're spotting on the outside part of the plate, those curveballs in the outer half of the plate, like you said, if you spot those first strike, good for you. I'm just going to pop that up. I'm just going to roll over on it. I'm not swinging at that. It is what it is. Um, You eliminate half the plate. And anything on the inner half, you just take a riff, you know, whip at and see what happens. And um, maybe something good happens and maybe you force pitchers to come inside more. But the only way pitchers are going to come inside is if you either A, prove you can lay off that outside stuff or do something with it, which is A, what he is used to be good at doing was just taking the up pitch the other way. He hasn't done that either. Like if he's, he's going the other way with it, it's in the air. It's not a line drive. Yeah. Like you, t- you saw the numbers, like line drives are down for him. Yeah, he's a guy who is never going to hit an opposite field home run. So it feels Probably like never it, know. no, so he's, it does feel like with him, if you do want to say he's got Kenny Lofton disease, it is, but his, his pool rate has actually been down. Um, we were going through the data a bit from peak. Well, yeah. Cause so he pops up to center field, pops up field so much now. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so it's, um, you know, I, I don't think he's necessarily selling out for power as much as they've adjusted and he's, he's got to change what yeah, he's the, doing. The fastball. He, plot is so clear. It's I, every, all the fastballs are concentrated low and away. I believe he's now hitting under 200 in the second half. Like that's how bad it's gotten. This is, Probably. you know, we're talking, we're talking about a guy who some people thought had a chance at 400. Again, I'm going to say no one's going to hit 400 again. The last time someone hit 400, um, African American play people weren't allowed to play baseball, which made it a little bit of a different game. Uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, it's, we're never gonna have another 400 hitter, but yeah. And nope. it, it, it's a situation now where, I'm trying to pull up the splits as we're we're talking, but yeah, he. I mean, he was hitting 204 a few days ago, and it, it, it's not improved in the second half. So let's see. Uh, second half, he's yeah, he's at 199 in 44 games in the second half. He's hitting under 200. And again, there's just nobody really better in that leadoff spot right now. Like you can't sit there. And, like the best thing you could do is maybe put Jose in the leadoff spot and hope for some like Grady Sizemore instant offense. Like there's just no good option. You could put Lane Thomas up there maybe because he he is kind of passive, so maybe he can work a walk. Um, He's at two eighty three on base percentage in the second half. Like, yeah, I think you you have to like it, that is a terrible on base percentage. Like he is but actively there, again, hurting this just, team. There's no good option. I don't know. It maybe moving him out of that spot can help him a little bit, but then you move John Kenzie right Noel lead off. Yeah, I mean, I, you know what? Will Brent not? Will Brent would be the worst. Uh, uh, high. I mean, Stephen Kwan still has the second highest on base percentage on the team. No, that's just in this half. But it's like that's the problem. Like this team, Andres not Menace ha- to walk on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, this team. Final, no. I mean, God, there's a weird world where it's like if Manzardo could keep it up, at least that guy gets on base. Like, well, he chased he's, a couple of times. I know he chased today. Well. But that's the problem. It's I like think it's Lane Thomas. I think it's Lane Thomas. He's the only at guy least against lefties. a little bit passive. At least against yeah, lefties. Yeah, against lefties, you can move keep Quan in line and move him down against lefties and see that that if that starts something. But Quan, I think, has got reverse splits again this year. I think he's hitting lefties. I think he's struggling it. against lefties more, actually. I think. I, mean, I, I thought I saw. Whole, well, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The whole thing is. 145 right versus lefties, 119 versus righties. WRC plus? Yeah. So he's, he's okay, so much it's better against better. lefties. Yeah. 
Well, that doesn't really help you then. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, like I said, Jose leadoff, instant offense. Although he's gotten caught stealing the last two days in a row, so hopefully he can turn that around. I don't know. Um, we're not going to get to roster tweaks and 40-man ads because we always run out of time for that. Yeah. But we'll do that Monday as part of Minor League Monday. Um, looking ahead real quick before we get out of the Dodgers series. So we're not going to be on – we're not going to be recording on Thursday. We, we, we were going to take Labor Day off this week. We're not going to record Sunday. But uh, because of how good the game was and how important that was for the Guardians, we decided to record. Um, but we will take Thursday night off uh, instead as a comp day. So we will not be with you on Friday. Sorry about that. So we'll get to the Dodgers series now. It looks like right now on Friday, it's going to be Matthew Boyd versus Landon Knack, Saturday Cobb versus Stone, and Sunday Gavin Williams versus Jack Flaherty. I think I think the expectation, Jeff, going in is you want one of three, right? You just want one. So no matter how you get there, whether you win the first game of the series or the last one, come away with one. This weekend, while the Guardians are playing the Dodgers, um, well, Thursday, the Guardians are off. The uh, Twins are playing the Rays. Once again, that is Pablo Lopez and Taj Bradley. That's a toss-up because Taj Bradley is pretty good, and the Twins are just kind of in a funk right now, to be honest with you. They got destroyed. The Tiger, uh, I guess we don't have to worry about the Tigers that much for Cleveland purposes, but the Astros are playing the Reds again on Tuesday. I don't know, on Thursday. That's Rhett Louder. I kind of hope Rhett Louder does good because they're my fantasy team, but also, you know, go against that Wake Forest vibe that everybody kind of hates. Um, the Orioles are off. The Yankees are off. The Royals are also off. So only the twins can game a ha- gain a half game. The red, the Astros can gain a half game and, and the third and second place over the weekend. You've got cannibalization. You've got, uh, twins and Royals. So I think you want the twins to, to win that series because you have the tiebreaker with them. Keep the Royals farther away. The Astros play the D-backs, who are really hot, and they just got Christian Walker back, so that's going to be interesting. The Yankees play the Cubs, who just threw a no-hitter on Wednesday night as a team, not as an individual. The Orioles play the Rays. Um, Yeah, take one of three against the Dodgers. The Jack Flaherty one should be interesting. They have familiarity with him. I know he's he's been a great pitcher since he went over there, and he's been a good pitcher all year, but they've got familiarity with him. Boyd's pitched great lately. Um... You know, Cobb was good his last time out. Stone's been really good. What what hurts for Friday night is Landon Knack is a changeup. Landon Knack and Gavin Stone are changeup artists. The Guardians do not do well with changeups. So they have been they're kind of middle of the pack. I'll say like the entire league just doesn't do well with that pitch. But they were kind of middle of the pack when we looked at the data, um, and they did okay when they were facing you know Flattery earlier this year. It's a tough team. I, you're on the road. You got the big time change. Like I think one out of three is very uh, the respectable. Sunday game. Yeah, the Sunday you game know. probably. Who knows? But yeah, just set your expectations going in and hope for the best. And uh, you know, it's a tough lineup to navigate. Their bullpen is goofy. Like they've got good pitchers, but there's a lot of goofy guys in the bullpen. So who and knows? Yeah, their bull- bullpen is top heavy, kind of like Cleveland's is. It is. They've got they've got a lot of names that have just been around, like Anthony Banda, who was in spring training with Cleveland this year. Cleveland sold him he's, this year. He's, he's one be, of their best relievers. Anthony Banda so, yeah. would be this would be probably would be really good on this team right now. I would gladly take back. Yeah, because yeah, he'd be their second second Left. lefty with Henches yeah. out out for the season. So which is why they sold him off. Um, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and he didn't look very good in spring training. Let's be honest, too. But uh, yeah, I mean. No. I, I I think a lot of it is just managing expectations, and uh, yeah, this is it's a good team. Enjoy this run, and then you got the White Sox after it. So yes, yeah. that that White Sox series, and they're going to get swept. Is... We already know that's what's going to happen. Oh. Again, winner of that series gets to keep Grady size more for next year, or or just the rest of the year. Let's let's get Grady out of there before he gets ruined by the White Sox. You know, he got ruined with injuries. Don't let the White Sox ruin him as a as a coach or a manager as well. So. Yeah, hope hope the Twins take two or three, take one from the Dodgers, keep the Royals farther away from you with the tiebreaker thing. Um, you know, at worst, if you win one of three, you could end the seat. You could end the weekend, um, you know, two and a half up, and that's that's fine with the White Sox coming up. But you got to sweep the White Sox. So Monday show, we won't again not here with you on Friday, but Monday show we'll recap the Dodgers series. We'll talk about the must win White Sox series. Very crazy to say, but it's a must win series. We'll look at the numbers checking in. We'll do minor league Monday. We'll talk about roster tweaks and 40 man um, ads for the off season ahead of the playoffs. And I want to give some shout outs to some every dares. We have four every dares in England, Chris Aker, Darren Lewis, uh, and then uh, 
Daniel Gomez Perez in Argentina. So uh, we love seeing that we've got everydayers all over the world. Where also, in we the world are all our everydayers? Columbia. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I was going to uh, say, we, he's on vacation in Columbia. Yeah, siege with, Columbia. Was it Siege with me or Scott Hauser? It's one of those two. Uh, they have I orange colors. Sure. So I think it's Siege with me. But uh, either way, thank you all for joining us. Remember to rate and review, do all that good jive. Thank you all, and go, go, Guardians, go.